Habakkuk's faith tested. This is the final devotion of our study of the book of Habakkuk. And the group, the group who are righteous, they will persevere in faith, meaning they will trust in the Lord and all of his promises that he will keep those even when they go through the darkest of times. Habakkuk, he had that kind of faith to persevere to the end. And he, he believed that God, his creator, would answer his prayer. Even though, you know, at that time, he didn't understand how that the Lord would use Babylon, who was evil, to accomplish his will. But it didn't matter. Nevertheless, he still had faith in God to keep his promises and that he would punish Babylon, even though he was using them as an instrument to punish his people of Israel, the same thing would happen to Babylon. You will have your fill of shame instead of glory. Drink yourself and show your uncircumcision. The cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you, and utter shame will come upon your glory. The violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, as will the destruction of the beasts that terrified them. For the blood of man and violence to the earth, to cities and all who dwell in them. Habakkuk, he was a faithful servant of the Lord, and he believed that the Lord would be faithful to him. Was he guilty of doing something wrong? No, he wasn't. And secondly, Habakkuk believed that the Lord would do as he did before and use his strong arm to save his people as he did in Egypt. Before him went pestilence and plague followed at his heels. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and shook the nations. Then the eternal mountains were scattered. The everlasting hills sank low. His were the everlasting ways. You went out for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. We understand that Habakkuk, he had deep faith in the Lord. And it's most clearly in Habakkuk 3.16 where it tells us, it says that he quivered. He trembled, his lips quivered, but he was satisfied to wait on the Lord quietly. I hear my body trembles, my lips quiver at the sound, rottenness enters into my bones. My legs tremble beneath me, yet I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon the people who invade us. God has answered Habakkuk's prayer. What did he say? He said for him to wait, and his answer is sufficient. Habakkuk, now he trusts in the Lord that he will keep his word. And that's the same as we must do. We must wait on the Lord and trust in his word. His word is his revelation to us. It is sufficient for us to understand two things. One, wow, that God's awesome act of salvation he accomplishes. And secondly, that he will accomplish all of his purposes to the conclusion it's true. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. We who are God's people should trust in his holy word fully. Meaning what? Meaning that we believe all of his promises in the Bible. And that we're not looking for some kind of special revelation outside the Bible. Like, for example, church tradition or dreams or anything added to his word. Only what he says in the Bible. Genuine faith perseveres, even though we have nothing that we can see as proof. Habakkuk, he proclaimed 
even though he didn't have much to support what he was saying as proof. Didn't matter. We must trust in the Lord. Habakkuk lost things that he needed, like food. He didn't have these things. Why? Because Babylon destroyed these things, and the Lord put a curse on the nation, on the land. The weather wasn't good for growing crops, and they didn't have basic things they needed. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Even though all of this, Habakkuk, he would not stop trusting in God. He learned to rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. It's easy for us to rejoice in the Lord when things are going well for us, yeah. But when things are not going well, it's not easy for us to rejoice in the Lord. One famous man, F.F. F. Bruce, he said for us to rejoice in God for his own sake, not for our sake, no, but for his own sake, for his will, for us to rejoice in that. And that is the evidence of pure faith. Our faith will persevere during the most difficult situations then. A deer that is trying to walk on a narrow path up on the mountains can be pretty scary, very narrow path, but God keeps the deer from going off the path and leads him to safety. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. That kind of faith that people have, who are they? They are the righteous. The righteous before the Lord, they believe in his promises. Now let's apply this to our Christian life. You know, when we go through the worst of situations, the most difficult times, we should call on the Lord to help us. You know, not just when we go through good times and and you know, trust in the Lord, but bad situations, no. No, we need to trust in Him all the time. If we, if we only trust Him in the good times, that means we don't trust in Him, period. You know, when we go through good times, what are we to do? We're to thank Him for pouring out His blessings and ask Him to sustain us when we are con confronted with really difficult times, when we walk through the darkest of times, to go to Him and ask Him to help us to rejoice in Him and to remember that He is our great reward. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. My wife, Tammy, and I, before we went through some difficult times, there were terrible times, and we noticed that our faith became stronger. Now, we're going through another difficult time, but we're not depressed, no. Now, sometimes our faith becomes weak, and we stop, and we realize we need to pray to the Lord and depend on Him to help sustain our faith. God is testing your faith. You know, some people say that God's testing your faith. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. But does it mean that he's seeing if people have faith in him when they go through the dark times? You know, or are they going to fail? And God's not going to be happy with them? No, that part's not true. And God tests our faith for our benefit. How does it benefit us? Well, we feel helpless and we depend on him more and our faith grows strong. That's our benefit. And God tests our faith. If, he's, if you're going through a difficult time, it's a time for you to grow in the Lord. You're thinking, what do I do? Turn to the Lord and depend on him. That's the point of him testing us. Coram Dio.